from Sewing Machine Warehouse in Sydney, Australia. And today we're going to have a look at the Juki F600 XC Quilt and Pro Special. Now this is a fabulous machine if you like a little bit of home decorating uh, and regular sewing obviously. But it comes with all the quilting extras. So this is something that you know you could fit into your lifestyle very easily. It comes with this fabulous carry case. The, the carry case has this nice blue panel which obviously you can fit all your accessories into. So be it your foot control, your lead and your um, accessory books. Okay, I'll just pop that aside for now. And if you have a look at the sewing machine itself, it's a nice sturdy machine. Okay, it's a beautiful sleek design. And you have hundreds and hundreds of stitches there that you can use as well as four styles of alphabet and um, some it's a little feature that comes with what they call random stitching so it kind of I'll, I'll stitch these out for you some of them um, but kind of changes its size as it's stitching along so that's a special feature on this machine as well as you've got an excellent array of quilting stitches there and they are very easy to access and I'll show you that in a second but right now we might try threading it okay so now we're going to thread the machine let's take our thread Right. and it's numbered so you can just follow that diagram on the machine and the last number there is number six now we're going to show you the needle threader so now we take it through number seven and trim the thread over number eight and number nine is the last action Pull the lever down, all the way down, and when you let go or release, it makes a little loop which you pull to the back, and that's your needle threaded. How easy is that? Alright, now we're ready to start by putting the bobbin in, so pull back your little lever, that pops your bobbin cover off, place your bobbin in the bobbin case area, and take it through number one. Now this must go anti-clockwise by the way. Take it through number two and trim it off at number three. Okay. Then place your bobbin cover on and click it into place. Now if you forget that little exercise, it's printed on your bobbin cover. Okay, now let's turn our machine on and have a look at the excellent screen. Hello Juki. Okay, now on the screen you'll notice that the stitch number will come up so it's ready to start sewing the minute you turn it on. It also identifies which foot you should have on. Now the reason this shows you two feet is that the foot A is on the machine but you might want to put a zipper in. So it actually tells you that if you're putting a zipper in to put the B foot on. Okay, so they're all situated there in your accessory tray and it has a second level okay which houses your um, other feet and accessories with a handy tape measure at the front all right now back to the screen now you'll notice there's two dials underneath the screen one is for your width and one is for your length so to increase the length of your stitch just turn your dial and you'll notice that the numbers increase as you turn clockwise and decrease as you go anti-clockwise. Now the, the default setting, that little box will disappear. Now same with the width. Now on your straight stitch you'll use this dial to move your needle position and you'll notice your needle is moving across as you turn it clockwise and back to the center and then any clockwise will take it to the left. So there you go, you've got umpteen number of positions there to suit whatever you're doing. 
Okay, let's start sewing. Now you'll notice that on your needle plate, you have your imperial and your metric measurements. You have your imperial here at the back and your metric here at the front. Now they've also put markings on your bobbin plate, which is handy. So if you are doing a one centimetre seam, you'll see that quite clearly. If you're doing a 1.5 centimetre, it'll cover all those, but you've got that marking there to line it up for regular dressmaking seams. Now, on the machine you'll also notice that we have our tie-off button, which incorporates our scissors. So as you start, turn that on. Instead of having to operate your scissors from here, this will be one action when you use your reverse button and it will automatically tie off at the beginning. Now to operate the tie off at the end, just press your reverse button as you would anyway. That will then go in a reverse motion forward and the trimmer will work in one smooth action. There you go. And that will take your thread neatly to the back. You can also operate your thread trimmer using your foot action only. Now on our foot control, you'll notice that if you press down on this side, it will actually activate the scissors. So let's try that. So start sewing. Now if you're done, just tap on the back of your foot control and it trims your thread. Voila! The machine also comes with a handy knee lifter. Now I was never a fan of this but I really love it. it pla you place it here in the front of your machine and you use your knee to operate the foot. Instead of having to lift the foot up and down this way, you just place your fabric underneath using your knee. That will bring the foot down. Start sewing. Now if you have to pivot, you merely use your knee to lift your foot up. Now look at the height of that action. Okay, so start sewing. Stop to pivot, turn your fabric, you've got both hands on your, on your work and there's no need to lose your spot. And then when you're done, raise the foot and pull your fabric out. How easy is that? Now let's have a look at how you choose other stitches from the menu. Now across the top here you have several buttons that have obviously this is the one we're on and we can directly choose any of these 10 stitches here on the front. So if I press 8 I will get a blind hem stitch, if I press 0 I will get a buttonhole. But how do I get to these? Okay now you'll notice at the top here there's a highlighted picture of how to get to this this menu and then if you need a buttonhole you press your buttonhole etc and so forth so let's take it down here and press the numbers one two three and you'll see these menus appear on your screen so if we need to do a buttonhole let's choose buttonhole there we go now dial in the number of the buttonhole you wish to do so let's choose 0 2 for the purpose of the exercise and you basically type in 0 2 and there's our buttonhole so let's get our buttonhole foot this is it here now I know it looks large but it actually works perfectly so let's pop our regular foot off by pressing the button at the back of the machine there at the shank of the shank Take that regular sewing foot off. Now let's place the buttonhole foot on 
and you can see how high I can raise that ankle to get it in the right spot there and you can hear it click in now take your little jack here and pop that into the appropriate hole which is really easy to access on the side of your sewing machine and pop that in like so a lot of them are underneath and you have to actually physically get down and see where to pop that in this is much easier now let's place our fabric underneath and I've just prepared a piece that has a little bit of interfacing in there which is how you should do all your buttonholes and we'll do a vertical one to start with and just line your fabric up with the edge of the foot and put your foot down okay and we've already taken the liberty of placing the button at the back of the foot here I'll just do that again so you can see it so take the button you're going to use and pop it in that back area and close it so it's nice and snug now without making any changes to the buttonhole we'll just stitch it out as it is This is a reinforced buttonhole, so it's great for heavier jackets or fabric that has a, an open weave. And this is all done in one action, so I've just placed my foot on the foot control and let the machine do the work. So it actually stitches over that twice with your zigzag and once with your straight stitch. Okay now I'll press the, on the back of my foot control and that will trim the thread for me and there it is look at that. Okay so remember this is a reinforced buttonhole for open weave fabrics. I'm actually going to do a keyhole buttonhole too now so let's choose that and I might choose 07 so there are several there so type in 07 and your keyhole buttonhole will appear on screen now while I'm here I might just turn on my tie off and scissors so the buttonhole will actually tie off automatically but the scissors will happen automatically as well so let's try a keyhole now I might try this doing this one across just to show you how that works so let's line the button the fabric sorry up where we need to start our buttonhole All right so this will be determined by the size of your button but I'm just going to do a random one here So it starts by doing the keyhole which is great because then you know exactly where that keyhole is on your jacket. It's not guesswork. So my buttonhole is complete and all you need to do then is just trim that thread. I just want to show you the buttonhole that I did for this jacket that I'm wearing. Okay and this is my sample so I always do a sample before I start and then do it on your garment. So you can see exactly how it's going to look. Alright, now let's have a look at it on stretch fabric. And I might just do a seam using one of its overlocking stitches. So I've chosen number 7 here. Just to see how it feeds the fabric. And it 
handles it very well. Now, just before I carry on a little bit, this machine also has a foot pressure adjustment. So it's normally set at three, and I've just lowered it slightly to two. And this allows the fabric to feed a little bit better if it's stretchy. So it's not pulling it. Now there's no need to reverse, so I'm just going to trim my thread. Just so you can have a look at the finish. There you go. So great for little baby garments, etc. And you could also use that as a pretty hem. Now we're going to try a little bit of voil. So it's not a very thick fabric either. And I'll just do a straight stitch. Now I'll use my tie off mechanism so that it does a back stitch for me and handles that fabric well as well. Now you can also shorten the stitch a little bit, which I like to do for finer fabrics. So I've taken that down to two millimeters. And just press my reverse button to get it to tie off and trim my thread. There you go, beautiful. No puckering whatsoever. All right, now I've threaded the machine up with some decorative threads so we can have a look at some of the decorative stitches and I've also changed to my clear view foot this is to help you see the pattern and you can follow the lines if you have any marked on your fabric okay and I have a bit of fabric here with a bit of interfacing or tear away inside and let's choose one of our stitches so if we go to our one two three and we'll have a look at one of the random stitches I spoke of. So let's choose number 24. And one, two, three, and then two and four. Okay, there we go. And off we go. As you can see, it randomly, randomly stitches those little arrowheads and it just gives a little bit of a twist on your stitch. I'll just press my reverse button to tie off and my scissors. Here you go. How lovely is that stitching? Okay, and then I'll just choose one of my other stitches, which um, I pick a stitch that not many people have seen before. Number 47. I'll just do that alongside. Now also, I didn't speak of the extra lighting in this machine. So you've got lighting above your needle as well as in the centre. So if you do so at night, it's a great way to see what's going on. How's that? That's a little different. Okay. There you go. Now the other thing I didn't talk about was the lettering as well. So if I go to my menu, because I've already programmed in a word, and let me just choose that style there. Press OK, OK. And let's have a look at the style of writing. go. Nice and clear so you can label your quilts or your children's clothing. Okay now I'd like to talk about the box feed system that the Dukey now has. 
um, they've changed the feeding system on the machine where they used to be elliptical and found that it dragged a lot on the fabric so you'd get a lot of uneven stitching or puckering so now they've created what they call a box feed so the feed dogs come up transport the fabric go down and keep going like this and so the fabric is in contact with the feed teeth for longer so I'm going to demonstrate by going around this square using one of the quilting patterns um, and we'll just see exactly what that might mean for you As you can see there's no puckering on the top and we'll have a look at the back and just check have a look at that nice even feeding even with a little bit of wadding in between so everything's moving simultaneously much like a walking foot would do, but on some things you won't need to put your walking foot on. There you go. Now also with your machine, you'll get a little pack of all the extra accessories that come with the machine. So you'll get... Oops. A walking foot and a guide, an eyelet cutter, an open toe foot, a quarter inch foot, a Teflon foot, sorry, non stick foot, and a stitch in the ditch foot, as well as a large spool cover, some extra needles, and an extra spool holder. Now we might do a little bit of applique so let's use our open toe foot okay now I'm going to choose one of my applique stitches up here or buttonhole stitches and that's on this menu here and we'll choose 02 I think all right now this is where your knee lifter comes into play So you can be sure to stay in line with the edge of your fabric. So you've got your open toe foot to see where you're going. And your needle will automatically stop down. And your knee lifter will just lift your foot up so that you can keep your fabric straight. Okay, so we skipped ahead a bit and we're coming to our final spot. And that might be our last one. And I might just use my thread trimmer. There you go, and you can just 
pull that thread back or trim it. And there's your applique heart. Okay, now if you like to, you'd like to set your machine up to do free motion work, um, you can take your accessory tray off, and the F600 comes with this excellent extension table, and this one has six feet, and this wraps around your free arm to give you a nice flat even surface. Now we'll put our free motion foot on. Comes with this handy little screwdriver tool. And we'll just take our shank off. And put that in a safe spot. And take your free motion foot just need to undo that a little bit more because it's quite thick there we go and screw that up And then you're ready to go. Now, I'm just going to lower my feed teeth. There we go. And might also reduce the foot pressure. Give me a little bit more room underneath. I'll reduce it to one. Now, I've just selected a straight stitch. So, let's start... Just randomly somewhere. And might just pull that thread out and keep hold of it. Just pop it out of the way now. There you go. So, for more information about the Juki F600 or any of our other products, please see our website. If you have any questions at all, contact us or leave a comment below. Don't forget to check out our other videos and click like and subscribe. From all of us at Sewing Machine Warehouse, happy sewing!